All right, so as we look at 2.5, uh, we've talked about uh, a bunch of different rules for calculating derivatives, the power rule, sum difference rule, uh, constant multiple rule. We talked about the power, or sorry, the product rule as well just recently. Now this one is the quotient rule. Now, <coughs> excuse me, before I get into the quotient rule, I did want to talk to you last day about some notations. This is just going to be a brief uh, explanation on the Leibniz notation. So if you look back to, I'm not sure where it's first introduced, to tell you the truth. <clears throat> I think we might have skipped, skipped it just a, a little bit here, but I want to talk about it now because you will be seeing it in your textbook more often. The Leibniz notation, and that's on well, page 84 if you want to look there, I, I, I see it there for sure. In some of the rules, I think most of the rules, <clears throat> they give you sort of the Newtonian notation and the Leibniz notation. Uh, so anyways, Leibniz notation uh, looks like this. If we have a function, okay, that we're taking the derivative of. <clears throat> so notice that we used to do, this is a symbol for taking the derivative, right? The derivative of f of x. This is not the Leibniz notation, though. And the reason why Leibniz notation caught on, he was one of the inventors of calculus, so he used it a lot. But it does have um, some applications when we get up to um, higher derivatives when we get to mm, even uh, like differential equations which we're going to get to so we use Leibniz notation there. You don't have to worry about it quite yet but what it looks like is this it's this symbol d over dx okay when you see this or you'll see uh, dy over dx okay that's Leibniz notation for finding the derivative of y or finding the derivative of f of x, okay? So, and of course, specifically, this part right here is the Leibniz notation. That's the big deal, right? The d over dx. Now, this is literally saying, <clears throat> find the derivative of f of x with respect to x, okay? Or as x as your primary uh, variable. x is the variable. Now, you may have other... Um, other letters or other symbols, but this is the variable that you're taking the derivative with respect to. So, you'll see it in the textbook more and more now, and I want you just to be aware of the Leibniz notation. Okay, so that's not really specific to the quotient rule, but I thought I'd just kind of take care of that here. All right, more on that later. Actually, I'll just erase it all. Okay, quotient rule. You don't have to erase it. Okay, so the quotient rule. Remember remember with the product rule, and we'll just zip back here to the product rule, we had a special situation when we're talking about the multiplication of two, um, two functions, right? Or a multiplication of two separate terms like this, 6x times 2x. We can't just take the derivative of each and multiply the derivative. That didn't work. So we had some special arrangement for the product rule. The same is true for quotients. Okay, so we're talking about a quotient rule. If we have, um, if we have the ratio of two, uh, two functions, so like if we have f of x and then a rational function with another function underneath, like divided like that, then we're going to use the quotient rule. So this, this is the case where we use the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is fairly um, different, okay? It's a little bit different. There's really no good way of just throwing this out there, so uh, other than just throwing it out there. So this is what happens here with the quotient rule. Now again, I always start with derivative first. So you will notice uh, once again that in the textbook, the, the red box in the textbook is slightly different than what I'm going to write. This is the way I memorized it, and this is the reason is that I always start with the derivative for product and quotient. So derivative of the top, I always start with f prime. Always start with a derivative. So for product rule, it was derivative of the first. I always start with a derivative if you're taking the derivative. That's just my, that's how I do it. So the derivative of the top, so here's the top one, times the bottom. So just like in the product rule, we have derivative of one and then the non-derivative of the other. Same thing for quotient rule. Derivative of the top times the bottom. But then instead of plus with product, it's minus, which makes sense, right? Quotient would be minus. So we're going to subtract now. And then we're going to do very similar to the, the product rule. It's the top 
times the derivative of the bottom. So that looks that looks a lot like the product rule, correct? Except for the minus. So it's very much the same except for the minus. The only other thing we have to remember to do, and it's easy to remember because this is a quotient rule, so you have to have a quotient in the uh, in the working out of it. So it's got to be divided by something else, and you divide it by the bottom function all squared. Okay, the bottom function all squared. <clears throat> so derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. Okay? I know it's kind of complicated. It's not just straight algebra anymore, right? Okay, so let's see. Let's do a couple examples but this is actually the exact same thing. It's just written a little bit differently, right? This x to the negative 2 would bring that x squared to be positive in the denominator. And of course, 1 6, that 6 is in the denominator. So these two are the exact same thing. And if you want to check it on your graphic calculator, you can graph the both of them. They should match on each other. All right, so let's just give this a try. Let's go back to product rule, see if we remember product rule. All right, so product rule says we take the derivative of the first times the second. That's the first step. So what's the derivative of this first term here? Well, it's negative 2 over 6. x to the what? Negative 3. Derivative of the first times the second. Plus the first times the derivative of the second. Okay, that looks a little scary, doesn't it? Well, let's let's multiply it out and uh, see what we got. Negative two over six is actually just negative one third. So when we multiply this times this first term, we have negative one third. And what's x to the negative three times x to the one? What do we do when we multiply those? We add exponents. So what do we get? X to the negative two. Good. And then, of course, minus 1 third x to the negative 3. Let me just multiply all that by 1. Plus 1 sixth x to the negative 2. Okay, so we have, we have some common, uh, common terms here, right? Like terms x to the negative 2, x to the negative 2, so we can add those up. So what's negative 1 third plus 1 6? Well, that's going to be, you have to make this into a common denominator, right? So what's that going to be? 2 6. So what's negative, what does this get you? Negative 1 6 x to the negative 2 minus 1 third x to the negative 3. And if we just went one step further, that would be negative 1 over 6x squared minus 1 over 3x cubed. Okay? So that's product rule. Now, did we do all that right? Any, any mistakes in there you see? Product rule. Okay, so here's product. All right, let's do this new quotient rule then and see what happens. Okay? Go back over here. And... Hmm. What's the derivative of the top? Well, that is, um, okay, function. Let's just call this f of x. Uh, the derivative of the top is 1 minus, okay, the, the top times, the derivative of the top times the bottom, so times, sorry, 6x squared, minus the top times the derivative of the bottom, which is, 12x. Okay, we good with that so far? Okay, so derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all divided by the bottom squared. So what's that? 36x to the fourth. Yeah? 
All right, so let's expand. Let's gather some like terms here. We've got 6x squared minus, now be careful with this here. Right? That's an expression there, so minus 12x squared plus 12x. All over 36x to the fourth. Okay, everyone good so far? You guys could probably, you know, finish simplifying this on your own and tell me whether I'm doing this right. Well, that's 6 minus 12. Okay, so now we could simplify this to try and get it uh, similar to this over here, couldn't we? And so what is negative uh, 6 over 36? That's negative 1, 6. And we have x squared over x to the fourth. It's x squared on the bottom. Then we have minus 12 over 36 is 1 third. And x to the 1 divided by x to the fourth is x cubed on the bottom. And so here we have... The exact same answer using that quotient rule. Okay? Quotient rule. So let's go back one more time. Derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. Very distinct rule, just like the product rule. And here we have the same function. Did it both ways, and you see we have the same answer. Okay, so just try this example here. See if you can do it on your own. Okay, so here's the rest of the question. It should be in pros there now. All right, so this was the first step that I showed you there just a second ago. And uh, when you expand all this stuff out and you get common terms, you should come up with this right here. I pulled the negative 2 out. Um, in the back of the book, I don't think they did, but you should take out any common factors. You should factor the top and the bottom as best possible. Um, so x squared plus x plus 1 isn't, isn't factored. Oh, sorry, what? Um, uh, yeah, I guess if I pulled out a negative 2, yes, this should be negative and that should be negative. Both of these should be negative, actually. Thank you. Yeah, I was just going to pull out a positive 2. So negative and negative. Good. Okay. Good. So does that match up with all of yours? No? Yeah, you should double check your work, look over your signs and stuff like that. Usually when I'm teaching, it's, I just let you guys double check my work like that, so it's perfect. I never do. So. All right, so, and again, as I was saying, x squared minus x minus 1 can't be, can't be factored. It's definitely not going to be a x squared plus 1 as a factor, so you don't have to worry about simplifying this stuff. Okay? All right, let's do another one. Go ahead and try that one. So derivative of the top, right here, derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top times the derivative of the bottom all over the bottom squared. And you simplify that and uh, yeah, like I say, if it was just me, I know this is the answer in the back of the book. So if it was me, I would take an, a factor out here, whatever I could. So x to the 5 gives you x to the 5 minus 60 over x to the 5 minus 10, all squared. So that's the way I would like to leave it for you, to tell you the truth, but I know the textbook just goes here. The reason why is these factors are not, you're not able to divide out those factors, so it's not a big deal. They don't, they don't feel the need to factor down any further. Okay? Okay, any questions?